what's up guys so we had um feral pox come through our flock now i would say like 75 percent of my chickens are vaccinated i this year just completely like neglected forgot to vaccinate my grow outs so my grow outs have been fighting with foul pox um it really sucks thankfully i haven't lost anyone but i could tell they're just like in pain they don't want to eat they're just kind of like meh um so we're gonna talk really quickly about just some facts on what foul pox is and what you can do to help these guys feel better so first thing is that foul pox is pretty much like chicken pox like how like humans get chicken pox <laughs> kind of funny like kind of weird they wouldn't just call it chicken pox but it's foul pox so whatever um but so it's pretty much just chicken pox for birds now this guy looks super super just kind of like meh whatever i actually he was actually he had it the worst i should have taken pictures when he had it really bad but i was just like worrying about trying to um keep everybody comfortable and make sure they were still eating um, i did tube feed this one for a while because he had it so bad that he couldn't open his eyes to see so i needed to make sure that he was still getting food and water and stuff like that um but yeah so there are two types of foul pox there are dry pox and wet pox Thankfully, 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 I only got the dry pox in my flocks. Dry pox are characterized by basically kind of scabs all over most of the exposed parts of the chicken's face. So if you look really closely on this guy, he has some scabbing around his eyes. Um, his eyes are now finally open and he has, they're finally drying up, but they were kind of like, um, like tan or like yellowy or like almost like orangey kind of scabs, but definitely drying up. The wet pox are characterized by they'll get like these like lesions inside their like throat and even in their airway and you have to watch because sometimes it can literally like suffocate them or grow so big that they can't eat. So wet pox is definitely in my opinion the um, the worst of the two. Um, dry pox are just super uncomfortable. So the incubation period of foul pox is about four to ten days and then about usually five to eight days after they were exposed to the virus. Um, they'll start to develop the symptoms. So you'll start to see the scabs or um, they're like the cheesy like lesions inside their mouth if they have the wet pox version. Um, and it typically takes about three to four weeks for it to start to clear up. Um, there is, because it's a virus, there's really not much that you can do for these guys. Um, you know, it's not like you can give an antibiotic and it goes away. If you start to see like respiratory issues, it's also often like it depletes their immune system a little bit. So it makes them more susceptible. So it's, it's good to, you know, give them um, supportive vitamins, things like that, some extra care. Um, and it can develop into like a respiratory thing. And in that case, you might have to treat the respiratory. Um, but for foul pox, there really isn't other than just like, like I said, supportive like TLC. There's not much that you can really do, unfortunately. Um, some people do recommend putting like iodine on the actual sores if it's the dry pox um, uh, like version of the virus. But um, yeah, other than that, you know, keeping it clean, don't be picking at it, leave it alone because then you can open them up to infection. You just have to really let it clear up on their own and just watch them, make sure everybody, you know, go around feeling crops, make sure everyone's eating, that sort of thing. Um, that's really kind of all you can do um, to feed them if there is someone who's like so sick that they're not um, if you're able to and if you feel comfortable don't go to feeding if you don't feel comfortable because you can easily aspirate um, your bird I do have a video on how to uh, to feed but you can really easily aspirate them so you have to be really careful now as far as like losing chickens to foul pox is actually pretty rare most of the time they do pull through I mean if, if your chicks get it if you have chicks that get it they became big they you know, they're just more fragile chicks are chicks they're um, a lot more fragile usually these birds do pull through it's pretty amazing how just kind of like hardy they are um you know the the biggest i would say symptoms are going to be just like poor appetite weight loss and just like being lethargic um that's kind of the worst that you'll see from these guys how is foul pox spread um it comes from mostly more than likely more likely than not your chickens got them from mosquitoes and mosquitoes are more common and active in like the summer and autumn months so typically during those times um, you know, mosquitoes are out on a rampage and that's when your chickens are most likely to get foul pox. Um, it is spread from chicken to chicken, most commonly through like small little injuries, scabs, things like that. You know, chickens peck each other, that sort of thing. But it can also just from close contact with other chickens, that sort of thing. Sorry, something like fell from the tree behind me and scared me. Um, that was scary. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so from chicken to chicken and then from mosquito. So, you know, if a mosquito bites the chicken, that chicken becomes a host and passes it on to another chicken. Okay, and let's talk about prevention because that's the most important thing. Um, like I said in the beginning, I have vaccinated most of my flock. Um, it's kind of like a daunting process, but there is a vaccine. You give it to them once and done. Um, another fun fact is that once birds get it, they, it's like chicken pox, like they don't get it again. Um, that's kind of like, you know, it's the same way like a vaccine works. It's like a small dose of the virus in their body. And then hopefully their body knows how to, um, you know, to fight it from there. Um, so the vaccine, and I'm going to make another video on it. I'm about to vaccine, vaccinate um, some of my grouts because some of my grouts didn't get it. I'm going to be vaccinating the rest of them and I'll make a video of that. Um, some of them did not get the virus this time around. Um, so I wanna make sure that everybody is protected. Um, I do have some chicks that are going to be growing up too. So I think I'm gonna wait for a little bit and then make a video on that, but I do have one coming. Now what it is, it's a vaccine. Um, you refrigerate it and then you kind of mix it up like any other vaccine and you take like a little like prong and you're going to take it and um, you put it through their wing web, like the web of their wing where their skin right under here and you just poke it through and um, it'll leave a small little like blue dye so you can keep track of who has been vaccinated and who hasn't. That dye does go away after a couple days. Um, but that's all it really takes. So yeah, so most important is just to keep these guys, you know, just you have to keep a close eye on them if they do happen to get it. But my biggest, biggest, biggest recommendation is don't mess up like me and skip out on vaccinating them because vaccinating them is the most important way to um, fight this thing so that they never have to deal with it. But luckily, you know, um, it's very rare to lose birds to foul pox. Um, the wet pox version is kind of the more um, active one or the more the more like intimidating one, I would say. Um, you know, that's the one where you have to be extra careful because then you can run into more respiratory issues and um, just your birds like really, really, really don't want to eat and that sort of thing. So wet pox is definitely more scary than the dry pox version. But all in all, just support them with extra vitamins. And like I said, keep an eye and make sure everyone's still eating and drinking and all that. And you should be good and it should clear up within probably a month or so. Um, it will run through your whole flock. Okay, and last um, fact about it is that it does stay in your soil and in your environment where your coop or your run is for a good amount of time. So you may see foul pox reappear even though it's not like mosquito season where you live. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind too, which is why I really recommend vaccinating your birds. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys.